Okay, so I've been sent a new case uh, for my Raspberry Pi 4. This is an Akaza Maze Pro case, and uh, I really like it. It's, uh, it's a passive case, and I really like passive cases, so uh, it's completely silent, and you can see it's got this, uh, it gets its name from this maze at the top, uh, which is obviously a way of dissipating the heat. If you have a look, you've got these two pillars that attach to the board, and uh, that's what's taking the heat away from the main components. But also, what I was really interested about when they sent it to me, uh, this cable is for power, not for a fan. There's no fan in here. Uh, it is all completely passive. These ridges are really quite deep, so that's how it's going to help to to spread that heat. But everything's nice and thin as well, so it looks like everything's going to be accessible when it's inside the case. So you can see the base here, which has got some risers on it, so the Pi board is going to sit on there and already be risen from the base. And it comes with a couple of heat pads and some little rubber feet as well and four screws. And that's it really. So let's put the pads onto these two. So neither of these two are very tacky, which is great because if I decide to take the pie out of this case, it means that I'm not gonna have a game trying to get it out. It was my worry. I was thinking if they're gonna be super sticky, then how am I gonna get that out? Because obviously you wouldn't be able to lever it very well, but they're not tacky at all. So you can see from the instructions here, it tells you which pins to use. And I was just trying to work out which one was which, so I, I saw that was ground, so I figured that would be the black cable. Turns out they're both black. But when you read the instructions, it says connect one wire to pin five and one wire to pin six. So it doesn't matter which, which wire you fit. So let's pop those two on. There you go, so you can see which ones are connected there. And let's make sure this cable goes in nicely so it's not touching anything else. Okay, so it's quite a tight fit here, so you've got to make sure that these are seated inside before you then drop that down, and then the screw holes are perfectly aligned now. And I bought this kit, I've been waiting to try this kit. Uh, this is from Amazon, and it's a screwdriver kit with all sorts of things. It's, it's for fixing phones and things like that as well, but it's got all sorts of extra bits in it, and a little suction tip. But the screwdriver bit is excellent, so if I flip that over, Everything's nice and clearly laid out, and uh, you've got two of most things. But the reason I bought this is my daughter spilled a huge amount of water over her laptop. It was a big glass of water. I didn't have the Torx 5 to be able to remove it, and uh, it took me ages. Weirdly, I had a Torx 4, and I had loads of other different uh, screwdriver sets and things like that, but none of them had a Torx 5 in it. So I decided to have that. So it took me probably about 40 minutes to get inside the laptop when it would have taken me about two minutes. Uh, and I dried it out, it seems to be okay. But it's magnetic and it extends as well. So you can basically, uh, if you've got a hard to reach area, you can still get in there. Uh, and it is, yeah, really nice to use. Right, so let's put that base on. There we go, and the four rubber feet. Very important for your desk uh, because you'll end up scratching it if you don't have these on. There we go. So you can see that it's nice and thin around all these edges, so everything should be very accessible. Uh, so yeah, all the USB, everything's quite nice and flush. And it looks like it's a nice accessible SD card slot, which is an important thing. Although you could, you could definitely lose your SD card in there and have to shake it out. So let's pop this one in just to have a look and see how accessible it is. Yeah, so it's accessible. You can definitely get to it and removal with your nail isn't a problem. So this is the removable GPIO plate. So you can see it's part of the case, but you can take it out if you need to get to those pins. And they do point out that when you've got the power button in place, then you can't use the full use of the GPIO pins because obviously you don't have the full spread of them, but you can still plug other things into other pins. So I'm running Twister on my cluster case at the moment, which is this one, so I'm just gonna shut that down and I'm gonna put Twister running on this and I'm gonna try the script and see if it runs on Twister because I'm guessing it's gonna work on 32-bit Raspberry Pi OS, but I wanna see what it does with a different OS. Twister is based on Raspberry Pi OS, so we should be okay. So I'm booting it up now, uh, just turning it on, comes on straight away, I haven't had to press the power button or anything, but I haven't put any script in there yet. And uh, here it is starting up. Okay, so I've started it up and I'm using Wi-Fi and uh, you can see it's a reasonably strong signal. The router is only 20 feet away uh, and there's nothing really in between it, so it shouldn't struggle. So if I do 
Akaza, Maze. Here we go. And probably under support, I'll get the uh, ins yeah, installation manual. So to use the same power button to safely shut down your Pi, you'll need to enter a script. And you can see the script here. Let's pop that into terminal. Now this may not work with Twister. I haven't tried this yet. Yeah, permission denied. So I'm going to boot up in Raspberry Pi OS and see what happens in that. Obviously, it probably can be adapted for all sorts of operating systems, but let's try it in Raspberry Pi OS because that's the standard. Okay, so that still didn't work. So I'm going to try and copy this bit into the config.txt. I would imagine that's what it needs to be. So same way as we would get into overclock. And let's just add this line in anywhere in here. And we'll see if that does it. So control X, yes, and enter. And let's reboot. Okay, so it started up absolutely fine. You can see I've got a couple of red lights on the front here. This is the power switch. So let's push that in and see what happens. Screen goes off. My monitor's showing that the Pi is still running, uh, so it still has a signal until this goes off. But uh, it looks like it's shutting it down uh, in... Well, it doesn't come up with any script or anything, so I need to know what that does, but I'll have a look at that. Okay, so it's off. So now if I press that button again... Watch for this blue light. That shows that I'm getting a signal. There you go, blue lights come on. So uh, it's starting up. Now this, where this is great is for a few different things. So Belena Audio, uh, where I use it to airplay content to a speaker, that'll be great for that because I can turn it on and off without having to have a keyboard or anything like that. Uh, but also, my recent HomePod video, which not a lot of people would have watched uh, who are into Pi stuff, although I did mention the Pi in there a little bit, I was using a Pi to generate a video signal. And there's basically a way of getting a soundbar uh, to work with a turntable or a cassette deck or anything else plugged in via your TV. And uh, it's super handy to be able to switch on and off the Pi. Uh, and I'm also thinking of uh, my headless Pi as well. So the one that I don't connect anything else to, just a power cable, to be able to switch that on and off uh, with a button is super handy. Okay, so I went back into Twister OS, and if I go back into the boot folder, so boot and config.txt, I added the line to this one. So dt overlay equals gpo dash shutdown. So I went in the same way as I went into Raspberry Pi OS, and I added this line to the config.txt. And uh, if I press the button now, you can hear a little click. You can see it comes up with this screen. So it doesn't actually shut it down. Now because Twister is based on Raspberry Pi OS, but it's using a different theme, it obviously reacts differently to that button. So it is attempting to shut it down, but this particular theme does it some, somewhat differently. Um, so I'm gonna try a few other operating systems. So let's, and I'm sure there's a way around this, and it might be, if, if you wanna be able to do this, with Twister OS, with a power button, because I've, I've been looking through as well, and this is just the standard way of uh, shutting down with a power button. So if you made your own power button, this is what you would add to config.txt. And it's been around on the older Pies as well, so it's been around for ages. So let's try a few different operating systems. So this is Manjaro, and I'm just gonna put it in, in an SD card reader, so it's running for an SD card. So if I go here, it should show up. There you go, and so I've got boot. Oh, and I need that. I need to copy that text, don't I? From so if I open this as well. So this is the one that I've done into Twister. So I just get that same line. And then go to. So this is the Manjaro one, so I've just got to find it. Sometimes it's in a different place. Uh, I think it's the same in, in Manjaro. Yeah, it looks like this would be fine. So let's pop it in there. 
and save that. So let's reboot with the SD card that Manjaro is on. Okay, so here's Manjaro, so let's press the button and see what happens. Oh, there you go, logging out in 27 seconds. So it looks like, well, is it gonna log out or is it gonna shut down? Uh, so it's definitely gonna be system dependent as to what it does. Uh, and maybe using a different theme will mean that you'll get that proper shutdown option you want. I'm sure there's more documented on this because it's a standard way of shutting down the Pi. So if you are getting that one operating system isn't shutting down, just Google that operating system and put in that little bit that you put into the config.txt and you'll find that it will be, uh, I'm sure there's a way of doing it. Hey, here you are, look, so it's taking us to this menu. Let's try that power button again, just in case. Yes, so that did shut it down by pressing the button the second time and also by waiting for it to fully shut down and then pressing the button again, it starts it up. So it works fine with Manjaro. So this is Ubuntu running from an M.2 drive and uh, I've applied the uh, bit of text. So let's click that and see if that starts up. Yeah, you can see the light has come on. Okay, so let's try shutting this down. Yeah, it doesn't seem to make a difference with Ubuntu. Although weirdly, when I started it up, I'm sure it said it disabled the shutdown on GPIO. So it may be some sort of security option in Ubuntu. So if you want to do it with Ubuntu, maybe you just need to look a little deeper. Uh, I'm sure it's possible. Okay, so Ubuntu Mate started up absolutely fine. Uh, so I pressed the button and it started it. But uh, it definitely disabled something. And let's go back and have a look at what it disables. Okay, so this is how it starts up when you press the button. And uh, there's a message that comes up, and I'll have to, I'll have to pause it because uh, it comes and goes really fast. So it's just starting up now, and it's this bit. Okay, so pin 3 already registered by, oh yeah, so error applying setting, reversing things back. So it is actually stopping it from doing it. So you probably just need to use a different pin. Um, again, looking through the Ubuntu forums, I'm sure someone's come across this before, because it's very common to put a power button on a Pi, and this case just uses the standard method. Okay, so I'm gonna boot into Raspberry Pi OS, and I'm gonna leave it playing video for a while, because I don't think this generates a lot of heat at all. It stayed very cool in all my tests, so uh, that'll be interesting to see. Okay, so I've left it playing a playlist for more than an hour now, uh, and you can see the temperature is 51, 52 degrees. Uh, it was full screen at 720, because 1080 just is a bit choppy, um, but, uh, but yeah, it's absolutely fine. Uh, if I quit out of that. So really impressed with the case. Uh, I really like, like the way it looks. If I put my hand on it, it isn't that hot to touch. Uh, it stays pretty cool uh, for a passive case. Uh, it is impressive. And I really like that power button. And uh, maybe I'll look at in the future other things that that button can be used for. Because it is a button, maybe you can program it to do other things on the Pi. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.